Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be giving you a flip through of Horizons Math Level 5. My middle daughter just finished Horizons Level 4 and I did not do a flip through of Level 4 so I thought I need to do a flip through of Level 5. Also, I'm going to link some videos down below where I do a comparison between Saxon Math and Horizons Level 4, um, Saxon 5-4 for you guys as well as some other Saxon Math curriculum for you guys to take a look at to be able to compare the two. So let's turn the camera around and I'm gonna give you guys an inside look at Horizons Math. Hello everyone, let's talk about Horizons Math Level 5. I'm gonna give you guys a flip through. When you get the Horizons curriculum, you are going to get your teacher's guide. You will also get Horizons Math Book 1 and Book 2. And I'm gonna give you a look into those in just a moment. Here is your teacher's guide. When you open up the teacher's guide, it gives you your contents of everything that is located within this teacher's guide. And I'm gonna show you all of it. If you keep flipping, it goes into the introduction. Before you start, challenge the goals, the design of this curriculum um, and the development and what that looks like for going through it and using it. Then it will also give you examples. There is also a readiness evaluation. This readiness evaluation can be found online if you're looking for it to determine if this is appropriate for your child for this level. So you don't have to buy the curriculum in order to determine if your child is ready for it. You would just simply get the readiness exam online, give it to your child and you can move on from there. But it's going to, this is the key to it. And then here are the uh, questions, the actual readiness questions here. And based on what your child would make on that would determine whether or not they need to stay at this level or go down to a lower level. And it tells you right here, it says the student should receive a score of 57 or more points to be ready to begin fifth grade. Be sure to note that areas of weakness, even for those who score over 50, 57 points. So you wanna be able to figure out where your child would need help and that might would direct your teaching for them a little bit different. Now Horizons is a uh, more teacher heavy, I guess, curriculum depending on your child's level, but it gives you instructions on what to do and I'll show you. Preparing for the lesson, um, organization and tests, all the tips in here, and then teacher lesson and how you organize all of those things for you. There are also maxims and I'll show you what that is. It is um, a proverb of some sort at the end of each lesson. So there are scriptures referenced within this curriculum. So if that is something that you do not want, then this will probably not be the curriculum for you. There's also um, Bible and Christian based references within some of the lessons. Not every lesson, but it's definitely there and I'll try to show you guys as we flip through. So when you get here, you have your scope and sequence. It basically just tells you everything that's going on and what your child's gonna be learning within this curriculum. And here, there are mathematics worksheets and this is supplemental work to help reinforce the concepts if your child is needing help with this. I do enjoy having these because you might spend an extra day on division. You might spend an extra day on, I don't know, addition or subtraction with um, regrouping. It just depends. And so the worksheets are here to help you. Number one, this is addition facts and this is lesson number one and it is used in lesson number one. Worksheet number two is subtraction facts, lesson three. As you get further down, you'll see where it kind of skips a few lessons. So here we're in expanded form of math, and this will be used with lesson number 14. And so if your child is needing help, you just simply go to that specific lesson, see if there's a worksheet for it, come here, and then you're good. If your child is on lesson 75, you'll look and say, oh, okay, they have a worksheet for 75. Let's go get lesson worksheet number 38 to be able to do that. The worksheets are in the back of this book and I will show you that in just a moment. The appearance of concepts. It tells you which lesson they're in. Um, if you want to research, you can. If you're looking for something specific, you would just need to go through and find where that specific topic is listed for the lessons and then go to that lesson. And this is also a spiral approach. So you're going to see the same concepts listed multiple times within different lessons because it is a spiral approach. This does not tell you which concept is a new concept, unfortunately. And so you won't know if they're working on something new just yet. You would have to do that based off of the knowledge that, that your child has gained in, in previous lessons and knowing what they've gone over. Here is the development of concepts, and this is grades three through six. I don't use this, it's a little confusing for me, but it kind of just tells you um, how they're progressing through the different concepts and, and what lesson number they're gonna be doing it in. 
then you hop right into your lessons. So lesson one, it's gonna tell you the concept that you're going over. It's going to give you objectives, what's the purpose of this lesson, and then you're going to have teaching tips. This one says give the students addition drill sheets until they can add problems quickly. You're gonna find addition drill sheets. There's actually one in here for lesson number one, but you can find those anywhere. You can get them online for free. Then material supplies and equipment. This one says you need counters, beans, or anything that can be grouped a chart paper or markers and then worksheet number one activities this goes through the activities that your child will work on it says after reviewing the addition terms write each of the addition properties on the board challenge the students to prove the properties are true using counters demonstrate the order of property of addition okay so you would go over this and this is a different activity for you to do with your child as they're going through this. This says lessons one through 10 review many of the skills covered in previous Horizons Math workbooks. And that is so true. Horizons Math does a spiral approach. It does a heavy review just like Saxon Math does. And so the first 45 to 50 lessons of this curriculum is all review from the previous level, level four. Here is your scripture reference or your maxim or your proverb here. It says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is Daniel chapter 12, verse three. You're gonna find that in all of these lessons. All right, moving on, it's the same thing. This is different activity. It says, after reviewing the subtraction terms, I'm gonna go to this book here. We're gonna turn to lesson number two. Properties of subtraction. So zero property of subtraction. So in this one, you're gonna do this and have your child go over them, review them. Obviously, this is from a previous lesson. So your child will be reviewing them and then you're gonna come over here and do these activities with your child. It tells you what material you would need and then you need worksheet number two. If you want your child to use worksheet number two, I will show you the worksheets in just a moment. They are in the back of the book. But you may not want your child to use worksheet number two. You may just feel like they have this down and you don't need to use the worksheets. That is how every lesson is set up. Here's your maxim again. Same one. Here's another one. They're at the end. This one is from an unknown author. It says anyone can eat an elephant if you cut it up in small enough pieces. What does that mean to you? That simply means take it slow, piece it by piece, and your child will get this concept. I love that. All right. So now moving on. That is how they are all set up. This one actually has a title, uh, a person who did it, Margaret Jensen. God's hand reaches us even in the disaster of life and draws us to himself and home. There we have it. Each lesson is set up the same way. Teaching tips, continue to give students drill sheets. So you're working on it. There are no math fact sheets within this curriculum. So we will have to find those somewhere else, which is an easy thing to find guys. You can totally do that. Going all through, then we have graph paper here different activities where they will use things. They need centimeter graph paper in worksheet number eight. Here's centimeter graph paper. They actually provided that for you. And then worksheet number eight. That is how each of the lessons is set up. And so you were basically doing these activities with your child. They may be able to do them on their own. That's totally up to you. Just kind of have to figure out where they are within being able to understand those all on their own. Here we are, lesson number 72. This one is, let's see, get ready. I'm gonna show you guys where they tell you the different activities. So we have these activities here, the materials you need, getting ready, and then here's the procedure that your child will go through. This does make the lessons a little bit longer. So you're looking at still spending about an hour on math. I'm going to go to one where it directs you to a test. Okay, we are on lesson 80. Same thing, you're gonna talk about the concept, the objectives, teaching tips, material supplies and equipment, nothing. You're gonna go through the activities. And it says the student may need assistance as they complete lesson practice 80. After lesson practice 80, then they will move on to test. Test eight covers lessons 66 through 75. Administer test eight, allowing the students 30 to 40 minutes to complete the test. They have a very specific time frame for your child. Quarter test number two is coming, is also here, covers lessons 41 through 80. So one day they would do lesson 80. The next day they would do test number eight. Then the next day they would do their quarter test. Or if you wanna give your child a day in between those tests to review and study material, that is perfectly awesome. This says administer quarter test number two, allowing the student 40 to 60 minutes to complete the test. So you're going to see this here your child will get into a pattern and they will know that I am at lesson number 80 after every 10th lesson, I need to do a test, but then also adding in those quarter tests as well. 40, 
80 and then 120 I believe it is and then they will have their final test as well so that's how it lets you know that your child needs to do a test and or a quarter test let's go all the way to the back there are 160 lessons in horizons math lesson number 160 all here and this one is now going to direct your child to take test number 16 they will get um, their quarter test number four here, and then they will have their final exam. So they could possibly have three tests in one week. It all depends on how you lay it out. I usually provide my daughter with a day in between the um, quarter test and the final exam. Here is your answer key. All of the answers laid out. There is no explanation, okay? So if you're looking for it explained well out, this will not give you that. But these lessons and the instruction here are very detailed and you should be able to figure that out, okay? So let's go past the answer key. We're gonna get into the worksheets here. Oh, actually it's test next. So here's your test key for each of the tests and then you get into your worksheets. Now remember it said at the beginning, grab worksheet number one. This is simply math facts. Then we have worksheet two math facts, three math facts. These are all math facts here. Then you start to get into worksheets for lesson number five. I believe it may be lesson number five, but remember in the front of the book, it tells you which lesson to use the worksheet with. For example, worksheet number 13 is to be used with lesson number 26. So let's go to worksheet number 13. And this correlates with lesson number 36. So there we have it for the worksheets. Not every lesson has a worksheet. So there may be a concept that you need your child to work on that there's not a worksheet for. So you may have to find supplemental work for that. Here are worksheet answer keys for all of the worksheets, which is super helpful. You do not have to guess. And then here are the tests. This is not the test answers. This is the actual test. Here's your quarter test here, and this is all of your quarter tests and then your final exam. So you have all of the quarter tests, quarter test number two, quarter test three and four, and then you have your final exam. And my daughter just, we just made copies of these. Then you get into your answer keys here. All of your tests, quarter test one, two, four, and then three, four, and then your final exam here. Now let's take a look into the actual student workbook. You're gonna have two workbooks. This one is going to cover lessons one through 80, and this one will cover 81 through 160. When you open it up, you're simply just going to open right up to a lesson. So much color, I love that, and my daughter loves it too. She loves all of the color and everything that goes along with it. As I said before, you will find some scripture reference within the lessons. Here is that same scripture that was in the teacher's lesson instruction book. It is also here in the student manual. There is not a lot of writing room. So my daughter does, if she has to work something out quite a bit, she has a math notebook that we use for her to be able to write in because it can get crazy. So here we are again with Matthew. And what they're doing is they are trying to fill in these numbers here to figure out this down here at the bottom. It does have quite a few of those. So you'll have your small section here, you'll go over that, then you'll do the activities that are located in your teacher's guide here, and then your child will come back and they will do the actual lesson work. I said before in a previous video that it may only say that there are seven problems, but as you can see, there are six problems here and you're looking at five, 10, 15 questions. Here, question number five, but there are three, six, nine answers that you need to fill in. So you're looking at quite a few problems. Number one here, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six, 12, 18, 18 questions that your child would have to answer within that section. So there's quite a few questions. Some people skip them. Some people don't do everything. If my child has a concept down for the review for this, we do not do every question. I will go through and I will check the ones that I want her to do. Lots of fun stuff though, and she loves doing all of this. She really enjoys this. We skipped all of this. As I said, she is about, I wanna say she's on, 
she did she wanted to do this so i had her she i let her go ahead and do it and she did some things in here so we're kind of like this is like lesson 40 41 there were some concepts that she had not gone over that i felt like she needed to review so we went ahead and started doing that after her test like this one they would color all the prime numbers yellow if it's larger than 50 and it would come out to some form of a design she does do that sometimes if she's feeling like it but if it's a concept that she knows already she'll just skip over it this one here you're going to try to figure out uh, the scripture for james 4 and 7. so as i said before there is bible reference the tests are also within here so as you see this is test number seven same thing she would just go through and do the test it's a couple of pages and there is a test after every 10 lessons so we're going to do we're going to go all the way to the back so we have lesson number 80 here and then she would go into test number eight, which is located right here in the book. Book number two is the same thing. You're just going through and it all looks so bright and so colorful and lots of different little fun activities for your child to do. And that's why my daughter really loves it. She enjoys doing math and then she can add in all of these kind of colorful personality type things that I like to say for her. All of the tests, as I said before, are embedded within this with exception of the quarterly tests. They are only in the teacher's book in the final exam. And so she just comes over and makes copies of those so that she can take those tests. But Horizons is a really fun curriculum for my daughter. She's really enjoying it. And so we're just going to continue on. 